Hello. So not too long ago we took a tourniquet class and we learned that you could stuff a wound. We've made this fake wound that we could pump blood into, but for ease of our experiment, Look at my palate. we are. <laughs> Do you know how I did that? We're just going to use a cup. We've made some fake blood. Nathan was curious about what else you could pack a wound with. Obviously, gauze is you know the thing that you would carry in your kit, but here we have ten other options. I think we made five. No, eight, nine. Paper like towel. Towel, like dish towel, mm -hmm. newspaper, regular paper, toilet paper, cotton balls, sponge, a two and a half yard roll of gauze, jersey like t-shirt material, and then fleece. And we're going to put the same amount of blood in a jar and we're going to see which one absorbs best, right? If you have an emergency, you're trying to find something to put, put in that wound really fast. Each of these has been measured to be to fill the container roughly. We didn't hard pack things. So we'll see how it goes. Doing a good job. Given the gauze was packed really tightly, is it is it absorbing pretty well? Yeah. Did it absorb at all? Or you still have a lot of gauze that hasn't gotten wet. Sorry, I'm not. So. Some things really absorb a lot. The sponges suck up a lot. Um, the cotton balls didn't even get completely soaked in soaking up the process. Um, the jersey shirt didn't really absorb a lot of blood. Is there a jersey And the fleece didn't absorb very much blood Why either. Is it called a jersey shirt? There you go. So that one little thing of gauze was like, that's like way more than enough, right? Yeah. Um... But we do know that part of packing packing a wound isn't just about absorbing the blood. It's actually about putting pressure putting pressure in there. So any of these things would work, but it's just interesting to see how each was different. Right. So yes, of course, this is Nathan's project. It was his idea. Uh, but you did. You did do a good job. You know, there's kind of two parts to this. There's a what absorbs blood well. It's great if you need to clean up a mess. But the fact that the jersey short doesn't necessarily absorb a lot of blood might make it really good to fill a wound with because like we just said a minute ago it's really about putting pressure on that on that wound so that blood can't come out and so if it if it's just sucking up all the blood it's not stopping the blood so in real life pack it with whatever you have but the gauze was amazingly absorbent and also also a barrier there's a lot of gauze in that little roll um, when you talk about something that you know was about the same size there was a lot of material in there and I can see why they use it anyway, it was just a neat experiment and uh, maybe you'll have fun with it too. Oh yeah, so one other thing. We started this because at the class Nathan said, hey, you could probably use paper to pack it. And when I thought of paper or toilet paper using to pack a wound, I thought, boy, it's just going to be a mess. It's going to get like smashed down. You ever got toilet paper wet? You know what I'm talking about. It just disintegrates into nothing and it wouldn't be very good to pack. However, with this experiment, we used the corn syrup blood, which is a very different material than water. So. I don't know how true to life the corn syrup blood is, I know it looks like blood. I don't know if it acts like blood when it comes to absorbing, so maybe there's one of you that has more experience with blood and or corn syrup that can tell us how similar they are or are not. That would be interesting. So part of this experiment surprised me because the toilet paper wasn't absorbing water, it was absorbing something thicker and it actually did a better job than I had expected.